Hello, Sally and I welcome you to Streams of Living Water. What has the new normal been looking like for you? Has your faith grown stronger during the crisis? Today, we're going to take a look at what to do when your faith fails. My name is Pastor David Burkadal. My wife, the Reverend Sally Welch, and I are co-producing these videos, Streams of Living Water, to provide a sense of connection and encouragement during uh, this time of pandemic, now going into the new normal for all of us, particularly the Christians of the Los Angeles area. Sally and I are both uh, retired, ordained clergy with over 80 years of ordained ministry experience between the two of us. We seem to be coming to the end of the pandemic and many of us have lost a lot. We've lost friends and family to COVID-19. We've lost time, we've lost education, we've lost work, we've lost experience, we've lost health care, we've lost jobs, and we've lost a sense of material security. We've lost a sense of connection to other people and for some, we fear them. We're out of practice reading body language, interpreting facial expressions without masks, and the many conscious and particularly unconscious signs that tell us how to understand our community who our friends are and where we belong, how to travel and how to shop. The world seems to have devolved into even smaller cliques than we remember. Groups who shared our values seem to have gotten smaller, and our national dialogue seems to have become even more adversarial. But we've also gained. We've gained new skills and new friends. We've developed our hobbies and taken on new ones. We've reconnected with family and friends through Zoom and other apps We've gained a new tool to share our faith with digital media. We've gained new ways to work collaboratively. We've reconnected with our families and whoever we found in our pod. We've met our neighbors and learned how to live with them. We've gained insight into ourselves and what we want to do with the rest of our lives. We've gained money and time by not commuting. Oh, and some of us have gained weight. And some of us have used the time away to loosen all ties including those to their church, faith, and their sense of being connected to a community. And some have used the time to reconsider the need for something real and are looking for, or will be looking for, a local Christian community. Some will be returning to church and will be looking to restore that sense of community in the hopes of at least finding something that is real in their lives. I have long thought that crisis is an amplifier of who we are as persons. What was weak gets weaker in a crisis, and what was strong gets stronger in a crisis. And so it is with faith. But I think that when we speak of faith, we should first be sure that we are talking about the same thing. So first I want to emphasize what faith is not. Faith is not optimism. It is not blind, and it is not a feeling. It is not something we work ourselves into or something we have to figure out for ourselves. If it is any of those things, optimism, blind, a feeling, an accomplishment, or something just for you, it is your faith. And because it comes from you, it is not up to the task of life, and sooner or later, it will fail, probably sooner rather than later. What is faith? Paul writes in the 11th chapter of his letter to the Hebrews, what many call the faith chapter in the first verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is knowing things we don't know, believing in things we cannot see. This makes us vulnerable in our post-enlightenment, modern and postmodern culture. We are challenged to prove what we believe about God is true with only material arguments. Or more commonly, we're just blown off with the words of Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski and the Big Lebowski. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. Or people inflate every bad experience they have ever had or heard about, every judgmental church lady or man, every boring worship service they ever sat through into evidence that the church is not for them and they just form their personal religion, spiritual, but not religious. A colleague sat next to a person whose life had come to this point on an airplane and reflecting on their conversation, she said, 
I am always interested by people who find ancient religion boring, but find themselves endlessly fascinating. Faith that truly is faith is none of those things. Faith is a gift. It comes as a living relationship with the one true living God. God's faith never fails, but yours probably will. And when it does, how do you get it back? First, don't bother. <laughs> If faith was something you manufactured for yourself and your own needs, it wasn't real to begin with. Second, God never abandons us, but we can move away from God. There was a bumper on the inside of the door to our emergency food pantry in the church I served with Compton that said, if you feel far from God, guess who moved? How do we move back to the faith that was real within us? Third, how many of us were confirmed after some happy hours with Luther's small catechism? You remember Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed? Of course you do. If you don't, buy the pamphlet online, pretty cheap, or go to AugsburgFortress.com and download their free digital version. Did I mention it's free? That explanation begins, I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Fourth, the Holy Spirit gives faith. How does this happen? Faith comes by hearing. In Paul's letter to the Romans, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse, he writes, so faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the Word of Christ. The Word of Christ is Christ's living reality. Are you feeling dry? As we come out of this pandemic and into the new normal, do you know who else felt that way before the pandemic? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa ordered that her journals be destroyed when she died, but they weren't, and her followers had them published. In them, we can see why she felt unwilling to have those diaries published. She writes about, and you know Mother Teresa who cared for the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, now on a track for sainthood in the Roman Catholic Church. She wrote how far she felt from God. She wrote in, in prayers in her journal, God, I, I, I work for you every day. I, I struggle and, and I serve. I serve the those who the world has forgotten, and yet I feel nothing. I, I, I get nothing. I have no sense of your presence. Come to me and, and let me have a sense of who you are at work in my life. That theme came up again and again, and many who read it said, ah, see, she was just a fake. She, she pretended to be saintly, but she was feeling nothing, nothing at all. And others said, look at what a saint she was. Most people say that there's no such thing as altruism, no such thing as true service, that we only do what we do for others because it makes us feel to, good to do it. That is its own reward. But Mother Teresa had no sense of reward, nothing. That was the nature of her connection with God. The nature of her faith was not a feeling, not, not even a sense of reward, but was this joy in God that transcended every other human emotion, the sense of being, of contact, of connection with God that, that nothing else could provide. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit. That is faith. Fifth, how can we be the means by which to bring others to a living relationship of faith? Study after study for, for decades has shown pretty much the same results. Depending on the study, between 80 and 85 percent of all people who come to faith in Christ do so through the influence of a credible witness, that is, through a friend or a relative. The other 15-20% comes from a church being in their neighborhood, a program, uh, a good uh, a youth program, choir program, music program, worship band, good preaching, good Bible study. That's maybe 15 or 20%, but 80 to 85% come from the credible witness of a friend or a relative. We are the first Bible some people will ever read. God doesn't see us that way. We're saints and sinners at the same time, but the world often expects more of us and are disappointed when we don't live up to their expectations. 
until they themselves become Christians. God doesn't see us that way, but that is the way people see us. And, and so that is why our wet witness must always be transparent, must have integrity, must be lived out of our inner selves, not, not a, a program or a rehearsed speech, but of the genuineness of our character that has been transformed by the presence of the living God. Sixth, faith comes out of community and can be transformed there as well. William Willimon is a United Methodist pastor, uh, was a seminary professor, uh, university chaplain, highly respected as a preacher. Once told a story about uh, a young woman who came to him in his office during the week and said, Pastor, uh, I need to talk with you. It's a fine, you have some time. Sit down. She said, well, Pastor, I, I've lost my faith and uh, you won't be seeing me at church anymore. I didn't want to just kind of slip away. I, I wanted to tell you that I've really struggled over this and I prayed about it. And, and it's just not there for me anymore. I just don't have that sense of faith. So I just wanted to thank you for everything you've meant to me over the years. And, and I wanted to say goodbye. And, and he ran through all the, all the arguments and tried to talk with her about it. And, and she, she just wasn't hearing it. And finally she left. And the next Sunday she was in church. And the Sunday after that. And the Sunday after that. And Pastor Willeman finally called her and asked her to stop by if she had time during the week, and she did. And he said, you know, you probably know what I'm calling about, she smiled. She said, uh, weren't you that same person that came in and said she had lost her faith and wouldn't be in church anymore? And now you've been here every week for three weeks in a row? And she said, yes, that was me. She, he said, well, what happened? She said, well, Pastor, after I left, I realized that this community was important to me. And, and it's meant everything to me in my spiritual life. And it came to me that sometimes when you can't believe for yourself, you have to be with people who will believe for you. That is the nature of the Christian community. We lift one another when we're low, we celebrate one another when we're high, when we're spiritually lofty. We, we are people who are a community of faith, not just a collection of individuals, but we are one body in Jesus Christ. And that's a way to restore that sense of, dis, of connection when we feel disconnected, by being connected to a community of faith. Faith that we generate for ourselves will fail. Faith that comes from a living relationship with the one true living God never fails, because it comes from a place that is holy, pure, and transcendent. A place that is real and ultimately true. That's how we know it is real, even when we struggle. And that is the seventh way we reconnect. Be real. Live from that transcendent life, from the inside out. As Philip Dick, the science fiction writer, once said, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, still is there. Turn to God, the Holy Spirit, the ongoing personal presence of God at work in the world for good. Open your heart to receive the streams of living water the metaphor for the Holy Spirit used in both the Old and New Testament. God will make you into something that is real. Get out of God's way today and let faith grow within you. Open your heart to hear the presence of God, to nourish you, to inspire you, to push you sometimes and make of you a new creation. And allow that faith to form you into a credible witness. Because faith is like a beard. Let it grow and it becomes the first thing people notice about you. Let God make of your life something real, something that never fails you, something that defines everything about you. We are starting to emerge now from the pandemic. Let God make of your life in the new normal, a life of faith. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, that you have called us into life that truly is life that you have given us the gift of faith, and we pray that you might nourish that faith and allow it to grow every day according to your promise and according to your will. We pray that that faith might be in the reality of your presence and not something of our own doing, but in the gift that is yours within us, the Holy Spirit, the streams of living water, and that it might recreate us, make of us a new creation, that we might be a credible witness and share that life of faith and the way to receive it with those around us. We bring before you the requests that have been made known to us 
for Dean George Pandua and our brothers and sisters in Christ in Tanzania, particularly in the new church at the Kawa. For pastors and church leaders as they make difficult decisions about worship for the greater good of God's people as we now move into the new normal. For new graduates of colleges and universities, high schools and trade schools and technical colleges and celebrate in celebration of what they have accomplished and in prayer for them and and your will at work within them as they move into the working world. For lasting peace in the Middle East, particularly in Israel and Palestine. For an end to the pandemic throughout the world, particularly for the people of India and Brazil. And for an end to the tragedies at our borders, that all may come to peace in you. For comfort and peace and the sure and certain hope of resurrection unto eternal life. For the families of all those who have died of COVID-19 and other causes in the past year. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, let's remember to pray for the leaders of our government and of our church. And let's remember to pray the Lord's Prayer today, the one that Jesus taught us. If you don't know what that is, contact us at the Revs David and Sally at gmail.com or contact us at our Twitter page at David Burkadal. And we'll answer every one. We'll include them in our prayers and we'll get back to you. As always, we encourage you to stay hydrated, to allow the streams of living water, the Bible's metaphor for the Holy Spirit, to wash over you, to form you, to reshape you, to nourish you, and make you into the person God has called and equipped and sent you to be in his name. We're pretty close to the end of the restrictions in Southern California, but we still have to be careful to wear our masks uh, where necessary to avoid uh, crowds to maintain social distancing, to get our vaccines, to do everything we can to keep the curve going down. We still have a large number of people who have not been vaccinated and we need to be careful for them and with them to keep people from being hospitalized, literally dying, and for restoring our economy to a level that will include a, a standard of life that is in accord with your will for all people. If you're having thoughts of suicide or struggling with mental health issues, call somebody. Contact a friend or a relative. Google a, a place that can help you. Go to a hotline. They're all over the country and they're here locally. There are people around you who will walk through you, with you through this dark time, through the new normal that, that we're just now on the edge of. Finally, be kind to everyone you come into contact with. It's difficult for it's a difficult time for everybody as we now try and figure out who we are and where we fit in this new normal. Be a person that helps. Oh, and the actual finally, <laughs> remember to pray for your pastor and your church. If you don't have a church, Google that. Talk to a friend or relative about that. Do some research. Check around. Uh, find a church, and when you find one or you have one, support that church in every way, including financially, to make sure it's able to provide the full spectrum of services and ministries that will help you and the community around you and us be a witness, a light, be the leaven, be the salt that because of its quality makes a difference in everything around us. And now let us receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.